Boy, bro, I ain't gonna lie, Walmart got this shit bumping right now. This would go on to be one of the most poorly aged clips in internet history. This was an IG Live that Lil Boom had conducted years before the event we're going to talk about today, which is the rampage he went on at Walmart. If you guys haven't already seen, 1090 Jake has done a really good breakdown of the paperwork and describing the situation, so I won't be diving too much into all that unless it's to provide context. All of the stuff today will be new footage. Lil Boom is most famously known now as one of Academic's friends, but that's not really his claim to fame. He had a very popular and viral meme song called F Steph Curry years ago. He had a popular song Already Dead, Sad Nigga Hours, and a couple of others. He was doing his thing in meme rap, but fell off by around 2020. Lil Boom had two counts of battery. He decided to plead no contest, which ended up with him being found guilty. He had probation, the psychosexual eval, which he says he didn't do, and couldn't be around minors for a period of time. I don't know how long. He says it's for a year, but he said a lot of stuff that has come out as bold-faced lies. So who are we to believe? This all comes out, and when the video footage dropped, I decided to post it. I wasn't first by any stretch of the imagination, but Lil Boom decided to pop in my DMs talking about he slapped a hand and I'm wild for trying to slander him when all I said in the post is that he touched kids, which he did on video. I didn't say in which manner. And then says everybody's against academics and I never posted him before. And I'm not going to leak DMs, but I will give my reply. I said the following, what this have to do with academics? I have nothing bad to say about him, nor have I ever said anything bad about him. This is a viral post and story, so I did my job. Unbiased. You touch the kid, slapping a hand or however you want to define it is still touching a kid. And the last time I posted you was when you had a huge song. You've just laid low since then. Musically, at least. I've never had an issue with academics, I don't know him personally, and hell, I even made a video talking about a show he did that I went to. So he's tweaking. You should check out that video, by the way. I'm gonna play the original footage in question right now. Here we go. Oh yeah, yeah right there. Okay, like, pause yeah, it. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry, I just want to write it down. So whenever I write my report, um, he approaches over. Is that, what is that? The tomato, potato. Yeah, okay, whatever. Um, approach the pretty sand. Children picking stuff out. Yeah. At least yesterday, he never touched it. Yeah. yeah. He reaches and grabs the younger one. She jumps away. Okay, you can play it. Play. <laughs> My handwriting, I can read it. So um, he lingers. Yeah, follows. Then grabs. Yeah. So in this footage, it's body cam from the officer whose pen is blocking the exact supposed moment of contact with the 10 year old before she recoiled several steps away. And it follows with the touching of the other girl after he follows them. Boom would go on to repeatedly gaslight everyone and drop this video on his own live stream addressing things. I don't care. <laughs> Listen, ready. I'm sorry to tell you, nobody gives a bro. Nobody, bro. I'm still here. Y'all got to come harder than that, bro. Y'all got to find me or something, bro, because I ain't going nowhere. No matter what 1090 Jake say, I'm not going anywhere, bro. On God, I'm not. Which is interesting because he deactivated his Instagram just last night. I was out the window. If I was out here touching kids, I would have a sex charge by now, bro. I would definitely have a sex charge by now. All right, I don't. My girl would have left me. She didn't. My mom, would, my family would disown me. They didn't. They know me. <laughs> I don't if you don't know me, that's why I don't care. Which is an argument he felt the need to repeatedly say, which has nothing to do with the evidence. There were four, quote, alleged victims that day. The first clip I showed you with the body cam is two of them. There's another set of footage from a different angle of boom. Now you tell me what you see.
Okay, so there's that, which is what everyone was arguing about, but what about this? This was in the paperwork. The male then walks away and continues throughout the grocery area, eventually walking to the cosmetic department at approximately 1653. In this area, there's a Hispanic female, possibly younger, wearing a white t-shirt, jeans, brown sandals, and long dark brown hair. The female is standing, looking at something on display, and the male walks behind her and brushes up very close from behind. The male walks back to her several times without the female noticing. The female then bends down to look at something, possibly on the shelf, and the male pulls out his cell phone and appears to be taking photographs from underneath the female as she is crouched down. The male does this for several moments until another female, an older Hispanic female wearing a gray shirt, knee-length jean skirt, and black sandals, approaches the younger female and moves the cart to behind the female, preventing the male from taking more photographs. So, you just heard all this on the paperwork. Now, this is what Lil Boom had to say about this part. I was not in the cosmetic department. Now, you tell me if it looks like he's in the cosmetics department. Because he's basically saying this officer lied about what she saw. And to not have Boom lie and say things were edited, I'm going to drop the full entire clip right here.
Now, Boom went on to say that he would have a sex charge if X, Y, and Z. He got off on a technicality and was lucky because they weren't able to get in contact with this girl. It should be noted that the female was wearing jeans, therefore does not meet the requirements for video voyeurism. I was unable to make contact with either females. The male then continues to stand next to the female with his cell phone out for several minutes before leaving the scene at approximately 1701 hours in the red vehicle. And as you can see, that's a description of what we just watched. But wait, there's more, Billy Mays. Because once again in the paperwork it says, the male then walks away, in reference to the two girls from before, and walks through the grocery area and eventually goes back to the produce department. At approximately 1646 hours, I observed the male approach an unknown black female wearing brown shirt and pants from behind. It appears that the male attempts to touch the female in the butt area, but the female does not react. The female then walks forward a few steps, and the male attempts to touch her again, which is when the female turns around and stares at the male. It should be noted that I have not been able to contact this victim. Roll the tape and let me know if it looks like this racist officer is profiling. Keep your eyes on the top left of the footage. This is where the girl is walking from and where she's followed by Boom. I mean, the poor girl even looks back after the second time. So I guess it's just a 10-year-old girl that just happens to look back and is racist. And I guess also this black girl happens to look back and she's also racist. Wow, crazy. It's funny too because Boom's whole claim is that he went there for some fish. But if we run the paperwork, it says at 1640 is when the incident with the two young girls and family happens. And it says in the paperwork, then he went to the black girl at 1646. So please explain to me how he was able to get this fish that he wants, which is where he said he was going, and supposedly went back to produce to get some vegetables when he's empty handed in the video with the black girl. That's not happening. What's also funny is he claims that he got his sister a birthday gift and that's why he was in the cosmetics section, but the cosmetics incident is at 1653, which is after the incident with the two girls and the black girl holding nothing in his hand again. Well, except the camera that he's taking photos with. Well reputed Chatney is hitting me saying, yo, act, there's video footage confirming what the affidavit said of Boom going to the cosmetic part. It, it, there's not video of you in the co cosmetic section, is there? Well, I'm not. For one, I'm not recording because they have my phone. But to say I was in a cosmetic a cosmetics line is not a crime. Oh shit! Yeah, and they found no evidence on my phone. They had my phone. So before he, said he wasn't in the cosmetics section, and now he was saying that he was, but they had his phone. When the video you guys saw earlier, he's clearly taken video and photo with his phone. Out of all this, Boom was so pressed on not being called a, quote, S predator, and is saying that he was going to sue 1090 Jake and Adam 22 for implying that, which is moronic. But let's just look at a couple of qualities that constitute an S predator. And you tell me if you believe Boom fits any of the criteria. Number one is using manipulative language. Well, it sounds to me like him saying he went from brushing someone to pushing someone to smacking someone's hand when in the video the 17 year old girl's hand is at her chest i don't think anyone's like pointed this out her hand is literally up covering her chest her elbow is basically at her waist and he's reaching below that what hand is he smacking using semantics for what he was sentenced to and countless other things sexual obsession well let's take a look at this ig live from boom that i played in the beginning of the video damn bro i need came going x videos bro Come on, bro. Y'all got to do better, man. I can't even get on X videos. Just see the phone. Now, that alone wouldn't be enough. Like, you know, sure, some people may do like a prank like that, although I would advise against it. But I'm pretty sure taking photo and video of a random girl in a Walmart cosmetic aisle is another example as to why someone would consider him sexually obsessed. Three, ignoring boundaries. Getting this close to all of these people when there's plenty of room and touching them may sound like that to some people. Four, victim playing. That's all he's done in the past couple of days. Ocala is racist. These Hispanics are white Hispanics, so they're scared of a black male. I'm the only lit rapper in Ocala. They all know me. I was just there for one day, and you caused terror in one day. 
they're trying to take me down to get at academics. It's all victim playing. That's just some. You tell me if it sounds like Boom fits the bill. I don't know personally, but this is open and shut after all of this footage. I don't see how anyone in their right mind could try to justify it or twist it, even Lil Boom himself, because he could have potentially, in a crazy scenario, skated on the first scene by some crazy people, but something weird happened in three entirely different scenarios in, like, what, less than 15 minutes at a Walmart in different sections? Get out of here. I'm just appalled at how someone who had this in their record could be brazenly beefing with other people, doxing, etc. Because that's how this all started. It started with him doxing a woman and her six-year-old kid. She tries to get some get back and succeeds at the highest level. If he just never did that, he would be fine. Nobody would ever look this up. And he likely would have been able to get it removed from the public in a couple of years. But that's what hubris will do to you. Make sure to subscribe for more.